Hey, I'm Ed Zinta, and this is What the Funk. All right, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look into the DAP Tools Visual Debugger, and we're going to see how we can use it to gas optimize our smart contracts. But first things first, if you're new around here or you haven't already, go ahead and make sure to like and subscribe and to click that notification icon down below. So whenever I post a new video, you get a notification. And now with that out of the way, let's get started. As you can see here, I've got a brand new smart contract project created by DAP Tools opened up in VS Code. If we open up our contract, we can see that it's empty. And then our test file has a bunch of default tests. So what we're going to do is create a simple function that reads from a storage variable and then performs some operations and then returns it. So let's go ahead and create our storage variable. Now with our storage variable created, let's create our function. So here we've got a function that pulls from my storage and does some manipulation. So here A is equal to my storage times 10, B is equal to my storage plus 8, and C is equal to my storage times 100. There's no rhyme or reason to this, I just did a bunch of random operations um, just so we can demonstrate in our debugger uh, what is going on with the storage. Now with our test file open up, let's go ahead and delete these default tests and let's simply just create a test that calls our function in our smart contract. So here we have our test function. It doesn't actually test anything. It simply just calls the function in our smart contract. So let's go ahead and run the test and see what happens. Let's run dab test. And there we go. Our test uses 20, about 2800 gas. Now let's go ahead and open up this test in the visual debugger provided by dab tools. And I'm going to show you what's actually going on under the hood in our function. So we can do this by running dap debug. And this will bring up all of the tests that you've created in your test file, and you can debug these tests one by one. So let's go ahead and debug this test. Now, if you're not familiar with the Ethereum Virtual Machine or opcode, this will look like hieroglyphics to you, but this is essentially the low-level code that is being run in the Ethereum Virtual Machine as it's uh, running on the blockchain. So each of these are doing little uh, atomic operations, um, inside of your transaction and managing memory, pushing variables around, etc. What we're going to do is just look at uh, basically what's going on as we run our function and we're gonna ignore most of this stuff because seriously, it'll take like a whole week to go over exactly what's going on right here. For this example, you're just gonna wanna be familiar with the N and P key. N will step forward in execution, P will step backward. So we're gonna press N and just basically skip over a whole bunch of stuff until we get to the part where it's actually executing our function. And as you're skipping over all of this stuff, you can kind of look down below and see which part of the execution is going on. So it shows the source code that's actually being executed as it's also executing the opcodes. But let's go ahead and skip ahead further. So we've gone ahead and skipped over a whole bunch of stuff, but as you can see down below or about right here, um, that we are inside of our contract and we're about to run the my funk function. So let's go ahead and skip ahead a little bit more and we're down to about the first line and you can see where we get to the my storage part we're doing an operation called sload and what sload is doing is basically loading a value from storage and when you're building smart contracts. One thing you want to understand about storing values is that there's temporary storage, memory, and then there's permanent storage, which is basically just labeled storage, but it's actually stored on the blockchain. And if you're storing values on the blockchain, that's one of the most expensive operations because it actually takes a space that lives on actual computers throughout the world. And so in order to prevent people from doing this without any good reason, it actually costs a lot more gas. So storing to the blockchain costs a lot of gas and also reading from the blockchain costs a lot of gas. So to read from the blockchain, you run an opcode called sload. So here to read from the my storage variable, we're gonna run sload and this will push the number 
42 at the top of the stack. Don't really worry about this if you don't really understand it, but the stack is basically a way for the Ethereum virtual machine to keep track of what's going on as it's calculating uh, different things and moving values around. Um, we could actually go into the stack in another longer video, but um, just understand that it's a way to kind of keep track of things going on during the transaction. So here we've pushed 42 to the stack. If we go forward, we skip over a bunch of other stuff going on. We go down to the next line to the point where we're going to read my storage. And so we see we have another S load. So keep in mind that these S loads are kind of expensive. So let's keep going further. And of course, we've got another S load. So we can see that anytime we reference this my storage variable, we are calling it straight from storage using S load, which costs a lot of gas. So seeing this in the debugger, we can kind of start looking for ways to optimize our contract and figure out, is there a way we can do the same thing uh, without all these expensive operations? So let's go ahead and try and do a function that does save us some gas. Now we've gone ahead and created another function that's almost the same as the original function, but a little bit different. The main difference is I've gone ahead and called the value of my storage and stored it in a local variable called local storage. And then for the rest of the operations, I've just used that local storage. Now in your smart contract, there are two other places you can actually store your values. We've already stored in storage before, but you can also store in memory and on the stack itself. Memory and stack are about the same amount. Memory tends to be a little bit more expensive depending on what you're doing, but the stack is the cheapest place you can actually store value. In Solidity, if you're using any sort of primitive data type like a uint or a boolean, something like this, these are automatically stored on the stack. Things like arrays and structs are stored in memory. Now the thing to note about memory and the stack is that it's cheaper to use than storage. To test this out, we can go ahead and write another test and see how much gas it actually uses. So in our test file, let's go ahead and write another test. This test just calls our new function. Let's go ahead and run it. Run dap test. And you can see our new test uses about 200 less gas. So you can see how in a bigger, more complex contract, you can save quite a lot of gas for your users. Now we can use the dap tools visual debugger to see what's going on under the hood and how this actually saves us gas. We can do a dab debug, and we can go ahead and select the second test we ran. Just like before, we're gonna skip over a whole bunch of stuff. So now, as you can see, we are in our smart contract and my cheap funk over here. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Now you can see where we reference my storage. We're going to do an S load because that's the only way we're gonna be able to get that. Now we're at the part where we're going to reference local storage. Now local storage is actually stored in the stack. So how do we actually reference this and use it in our calculation? Here we have this opcode called dupe3. So because the number 42 which we loaded is already in our stack, we can call this opcode and all this means is duplicate the value at stack level 3. So right here we can see it's the value 42. So if we hit N and go and execute this portion, you can see it duplicated that and then pushed 42 on the stack. So now the EVM can actually use this value and do some more stuff with it. So let's go ahead and skip ahead to the next line. So here you can see local storage is being used again. And this time we're calling dupe 4 because the number 42 is at the fourth position in the stack. Now it's very possible if you're one of those galaxy brain types, you could write all of these opcodes by hand and create a smart contract that way, but it's much easier to just use Solidity and the Solidity compiler will go ahead and figure out all of these stack positions and memory locations and do all this stuff for you. So when we compiled this with Solidity, it went ahead and figured out after whatever operations it did in the line above that the value was going to be stored in stack position 42. We don't have to do that, fortunately. But it's nice to understand what these different opcodes do and see what's going on under the hood. And the more you understand, the more you can look at different ways to optimize your code. So let's skip ahead to the last line and then just kind of see what's going on. So 
So here you can see once again, to reference this local storage, it's just going to duplicate the value at position five in the stack. So to get an idea of how much gas you're actually saving by using memory or the stack rather than storage, keep in mind that an S-load opcode actually costs 200 gas, whereas pulling from memory using M-load or from the stack using one of these dupe opcodes, those cost three gas. So which would you rather use? And the more complex your contract gets, the more that 200 gas starts to add up with each S-load operation. And that's it. That's how you can use the DAP Tools Visual Debugger to help gas optimize your smart contracts. I would encourage you to start playing around with the Visual Debugger yourself. Maybe read the Ethereum Yellow Paper, read a little bit about EVM and the different opcodes available, and just get a better idea of what's going on under the hood of your smart contracts. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button. If you have a comment or question, leave them down below. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.